Hi, and welcome to Run Tall. I'm Tim. Thanks for being here. I always appreciate the time that you and I get to spend together, so thanks for tuning in. And I hope wherever you are that you're happy, healthy, and staying safe. Today's video is a final thoughts and results video of the marathon training program that I completed to help me prepare for the Detroit Marathon that I ran October the 16th of this year. Some of the things I want to cover is what am I going to be doing differently going forward as I prepare for my next marathon that's coming up in mid-April? What did I like about this training program? The results that I saw, not just the times that or the time that I, that I was able to complete the marathon in, but also what were the results over that 16 week period? So what effect did it have on my pace from start to finish? And what did the mileage look like that I was running each week? I'm also going to share with you how you can set up your own Garmin training program if you want to. But I'll cover that probably at the end of this video because this is, I think, the third time that I've done this video. But it's gotten really long. So I'm going to try to shorten it down and get a, to be a little bit more concise. And to be able to share the things with you that I think are most important right up front. And for those that want to skip ahead or skip around to the parts of the video that are most important to you so that you can save yourself a little bit of time, I'm going to create some chapters for you to be able to do that as well. So one of the first things that I'm going to do differently going forward is when I hit about the eight week mark in this training plan, there were days or weeks when it was having me run maybe three or four times in a row. And that's a little bit difficult for me, not, not necessarily from a cardio standpoint, but just from a soft tissue type of an issue that I can have from time to time. So I want to be able to avoid any kind of risk of injury. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to run those times if my body's up for it and I feel good. But if I have any kind of question mark at all, what I'm likely to do is to swap out maybe a recovery run for maybe a recovery ride on my stationary bike or my mountain bike so that I'm not necessarily pounding the pavement you know, more than three days in a row. Because four days in a row for me, I know from experience, is when I start to run the risk of feeling a little bit of, for lack of a better term, a shin splint pain or overuse injury. And once that starts to happen, it's really tough to recover from that. So I want to avoid that at all costs and or any kind of IT band syndrome issues that I might have or hamstring issues, that kind of stuff. So going forward, I'm just going to pay a little bit more attention to my body and to the structure of the workouts that they have uh, scheduled for me for that week and not be afraid to substitute out things like riding my bike for a recovery run if it's going to be able to reduce that risk of injury. And a lot Along those lines, the number one thing that I'm doing differently that I've not done before, and I encourage everyone to do this if you haven't done it in the past, and that's to get a full assessment of yourself physically and you know your strength, your mobility, and maybe if you can, have an analysis of your stride or your run uh, done for you so that you can make sure that when you're getting ready to start your next training block that you're prepared to do that and you can run it safely. Now, I connected with a company called Netic Health. And I just went through a full assessment of my mobility and my strength, and they're going to do a run analysis. So they're going to let me know if there's some things that I can do or improve uh, in my running form. So I'm really looking forward to that. And from that information, so I went through that just a couple of days ago on Monday this week. They're going to develop a plan for me to help with my mobility, to help strengthen my core and strengthen all those areas that might have some imbalances that they've uh, identified. And if there's anything that I might be able to do differently to improve my running form, they're going to put together that plan and they're going to share it with me so that I can interweave it with the intermediate training program, marathon training plan that I plan to, that I'm going to be using to help me prepare for the next marathon, which again is going to be in mid-April. So those are a couple of the two major things that I'm going to be doing going forward and, and differences uh, from this next training block to one that I just completed for Detroit. Okay, so let's start to break it down. And again, if you want to learn a little bit more about it or set one up for yourself, this one or other Garmin uh, programs, I'll show you how to do that at the end of this video. But for right now, let's break down the 16 week program. So again, 16 weeks long, four months. And it started for me on June the 27th. That was my first run day. And it ended on October 16th, which was the day that I ran the marathon. Now, halfway through, I did a, an evaluation or an assessment of where I was in terms of the number of workouts and that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, at that at that halfway mark, at the eight week mark. So I'm going to kind of look away a little bit because I've got that information from. You might remember from that eight week video, I put it on this big giant uh, cardboard piece here. So I got it off to the side. So just to recap that, during that first eighteen weeks, I hit, or eight weeks rather, I ran two hundred and eighty nine total miles. So two hundred eighty nine miles. Had eight recovery runs. 
two easy runs, and this was a surprise to many of us, including myself, 18 speed days. So 18 speed days and then eight long runs. So out of the 36 times that I ran, half of them, I was doing some speed work. Now that's in stark contrast related to the second half. So that was the first eight weeks. So that's getting up to the top of the mountain. That's really where we kind of peaked out both in terms of overall mileage um, and obviously with the speed days that we were doing. So working on that VO2 max primarily. So now let's look at the second eight weeks. Now here, I've got it written on a much smaller piece of paper. Um, I ran uh, 35 times, 36 times if you include the marathon. So in total, it had me running really 74 scheduled workouts, but I missed two of them. One during the first eight weeks and one during the second eight weeks. Both of them easy runs and both times I played golf. So <laughs> I still, I had a lot of fun and it was important to me to build spend that time with the family. But so 74 scheduled workouts. I ran 72 of them uh, all together, including, uh, including the marathon. So 14 of them were an easy run. So remember in the first half, it was just two were easy runs. So second half, 14 of them were easy runs. 12, I was doing some speed work. So first one, 18, second half, it was 12. So that was reduced significantly. Uh, and then we had eight long runs and then uh, a one recover, just one recovery run. And then of course the marathon all together from start to finish, I ran just a little over 600 miles to prepare to run that 26.2 miles. So I found I found that to be really interesting. And I'm, I'm gonna put a graphic up on the screen too, because this, this is really something that was a bit of a kind of a, not really a wow factor for me, but it, but kind of, you know, so this, this is a graphic. I, I went ahead and inputted all of the information from each of the different workouts in terms of my pace for, for those different runs right from the start to the finish. So all 70, some of them are here. And what I want you to notice is during that first, the, the first start from day one, my pace range was somewhat slow. You know, I was running maybe a nine and a half, sometimes almost a 10 minute mile pace. But over time, gradually, slowly, so much so slowly that I didn't really notice it at the time. But that pace began to increase just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit until we get to the point where I was ready to run that marathon. And there you can see that I was running a much faster pace by the end of it. So I think my overall marathon pace on marathon day was a 7, 741 minute mile pace. So, you know, I came in at three hours, 21 minutes and 10 seconds. So I, I far exceeded my expectation or my goal, which was to run it in three hours and 25 minutes. And by the way, <laughs> I'm just really proud of this. It qualified me for Boston, Chicago, and a qualifying time for the New York City Marathon. So all three major marathons, this program got me there. So I'm really excited about that. Now, I, I've been accepted. I'm good to go for Boston and Chicago. New York hasn't put out the registration date yet, so I will likely register for that. I know that that's a lot to do in one year to run three majors here in the U.S., uh, but I'm going to try it anyway if, if I can. If I can get into New York, I'm definitely going to give it a go. Okay, and then the other thing that I wanted or that I noticed when I graphed it out is I, I graphed out the miles that I ran as well. And what was interesting is I, I really topped out at 43 miles. I think that was the most or the longest that I had run in any one week during the training. So the miles, the miles themselves remained pretty much the same, but my long runs tended to get longer, of course, um, building up to the point where then we get into that taper the last couple of weeks. So that I found to be pretty interesting as well. And when I divided it out, so the total the total number of miles that I ran that 600, a little over 600 miles over the course of that 16 weeks, that came out to just about 37 and a half miles a week. So it's not a high mileage program. It might be for some, obviously, and that's okay. But for many other runners who are out there preparing for marathons, they're running a lot more miles. Now, if my name started with Seth, you know, I remember watching him prepare for the New York Marathon where he was running 140 miles a week. I mean, goodness gracious, holy cow. I, uh, not in my wildest dreams would I be running 140 miles per week. My body couldn't, my body couldn't withstand those number of miles anyway, all that pounding of the pavement. And my, and my name doesn't end in Kafuzi either, who is also a high mileage runner. Love both those guys, love their channels. I watch them all the time. Uh, but for me, 37 and a half mile average per week, 
got me to all three majors here in the U.S. So I'm really happy with the overall results of this training plan. And it's absolutely free for anybody to use. And I'll show you how to set that up here in just a second. I'm going to show you where it is that I found this training program. In case it's something that you might be interested in setting up for yourself, it's a free training plan that's offered by Garmin. To find it, all you have to do is to go to connect.garmin.com. And if you don't have an account, you'll need to set one up. Now I'm going to turn and I'm going to look at my computer for a second and just kind of walk you through the process. Okay, so if you're into connect.garmin.com, you got your account set up. If you scroll all the way over to the left hand side here, a bunch of menu items are going to pop up as your mouse hits over there. And then you're going to go to scroll down to where it says training and planning. So click on that. And then you're going to go down to where it says training plan. And here you're going to see a bunch of programs that are available through Garmin. That's again, absolutely free for you to do. Everything from you know running, cycling, triathlon training. They got guide, uh, guided programs or coaches programs that go up through to a half marathon that you could choose from. And if you want to learn more about those, just hit me up in the comment section below and I'll be glad to kind of walk you through and talk about that with you too. Um, but if we scroll all the way down, we're going to find their self-guided plan. So this is the one that I used to help me prepare for Detroit and the marathon that I ran just previously to that. And they have, you can see a number of self-guided plans, 5K, 10K, half marathon, but this is a marathon training program. So I'm going to scroll down. Now you could choose to run a program based on heart rate and you can do one for beginners and you can do it for intermediate or even advanced. Now I'm not at that advanced level, but I'm not necessarily a beginner either. So I'm going to, I had chosen for this one, an intermediate training plan. Now I'm actually setting this up because this is going to be the program that I continue to use to be able to train and prepare to run the Boston Marathon. So, you know, I had considered maybe trying something a little bit different, but in my mind, I'm thinking, well, this is the plan that got me here. So I was able to qualify for Boston, Chicago, and New York using this training plan. Why would I do something different? So, but I might do a few things a little differently in this plan itself, but I'm not going to use a different plan altogether, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to go to start date. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to I'm going to start this after Christmas. So I'm going to start on December the 27th. And if if the math works out, when I hit schedule, it, you're going to see where it says that it's going to run through to April the 17th, which is perfect because that's exactly what I want it to do. I want it to end uh, with the marathon that I'm going to be running in Boston. And if we scroll ahead all the way to where it says week 16 down at the bottom. You're going to see where it says April the 17th, 2023, race day. Good luck. So perfect. So I got it scheduled exactly the way that I want it to be. Now, if you wanted to go back and let's see, I'm going to go back to where it says training plan. So now that that is scheduled, so when the time comes, what's great about this is it loads it to my smartphone, but also all of the workouts are going to be loaded right up to my Garmin Phoenix. Now, this is a Phoenix 6. I know that the Phoenix 7 is out there. I haven't updated to the newest version, but this one's working great, so I probably won't. All right, so I am good to go to start training for Boston just less than two weeks away. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to integrating that new mobility strength training program that Netic is putting together for me. I do plan to be really mindful of the number of times or days that I run in a row so I don't overdo it and run the risk of getting an overuse injury. Oh, and then the other thing that I do want to pay attention to, that I need to pay attention to, is the one issue that I did have after running the Detroit Marathon afterwards, not during, but after, is I had a lot of stomach upset. So I need to pay attention to what it is that I'm eating ahead of time, the amount of rest that I'm getting, all those good things. So whatever I can do to try to reduce the possibility of having that runner's stomach afterwards, is something I'm really going to be interested in. So if, hey, if that's happened to you guys and you found something that works for you, please share it in the comment section below. I'm always happy to hear about what other people are doing and how it's worked for them. And it's something that I am a bit concerned about because I'm going to be going to Boston. It is my dream race, but I'm not going to be there alone. I have a number of people that want to come and support me, which I think is awesome. But what I don't want to happen is to complete the race and then feel too sick to really enjoy the time after with family and friends. So those are things that I need to pay attention to. Hey, thanks for being a part of this marathon journey. I hope you can join me for the next one as I prepare for the Boston Marathon. The first date that I'm going to be running or working out is going to be on December 27th, so right after Christmas. So again, I hope you can join me for that. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.
right here on Run Tall with Tim. <laughs>